Coming up on Bondi Rescue. Yes, yes, 50 yes, degrees yes. inside and no way out. There's a child locked in the car. This could go pear-shaped pretty quickly. A good Samaritan goes to a mother and daughter, even though he can barely swim himself. He saved those girls' lives. Is that your bag? Uh, Caught red-handed. Keep out of here, mate. One of the lifeguards is chasing him now. We could get someone out. And what has Harrison spotted in the water? Sunshine ushers in a new morning at Bondi. For many swimmers, a dip at Bondi is a daily ritual. For others, it's their first time at Australia's most famous beach. The experience of lifeguards varies too. From veterans down through to trainees. Heart rate's up a little bit, adrenaline's kicking in. Feels good fun. There are also Bondi's future lifeguards. No matter what level of experience, vigilance is key. Because just where and how trouble strikes is never certain. Central to Rhino, boys. I just got a vibe and going under it. It's right on the shore. He's three metres from the shore and he's completely, completely drowning. Barely a few steps from shore, a tourist is being swept out to sea. Fully going under again. There's a kid in a fluoro already holding him up. Mid-rescue, the young surfer suddenly abandons the man and heads back to shore. That's off its head. Go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah. Maxie finally reaches the man, who's worn out from fighting the rip. Confused and tired, the man chooses an unconventional position. You know, I just wanted to have a bit of a relaxing ride in. You know, looking up at the stars. Oh, I just faced the impact of this. This is epic. A very unconventional rescue. Very original. Uh, all time. It's okay. 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 Thank you. The question remains: What caused the young surfer to try and rescue the man, then suddenly abandon him? A surfer was trying to help me. He got stung pretty bad by a blue bottle, so he ditched him. We we're, were watching, and the kid did a good job. Good. You good? You hurt? No. Oh uh, yeah. Fine. Today was this young surfer's first attempt at a rescue. What, what, tell me what happened out there. Oh, well, I was battling out and I asked the guy if he's struggling, so I just gave him my board and and then I was stung like three times. Oh, a good effort, mate. Thanks. Future lifeguards right here, right? Yeah. Eh? Sunshine, warm water, carefree vibes. Everything is just perfect until you get back to your towel and find someone has stolen your belongings. Uh, we had a complaint from a guy that keeps checking people's bags and things. And we saw what he was doing, walking around bags, and then within another 20 seconds, he'd picked a bag up. Lifeguards can't jump to any conclusions, so Corey makes a polite approach. How are you, mate? All good? I um, just had someone just sort of complaining that you've been stalking people's bags. Well, I just got it. Is that your bag? Yeah. yeah. I just got it. I just, just want to just wanna make sure just because someone oh, brought, yeah, it, brought it to our attention, that's all. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll probably just walk the beach down there. So two towels. Mate's up there. Is, have you got ID in the bag? Or? No, it's in the towel. Okay. You could just see like the way he was answering. He was starting to get a little bit hesitant with, with his answers and I just knew too well that yeah. he's just straight up lying. So where's stuff. your car keys? Oh, he's got he's, he drove it. Yeah. You said it was your car? No, said it was we, your, drove, we drove You said yeah. it was your Commodore. He drove. Oh, oh, no, no, no. We got a Commodore. 
Oh, you can come up and see the car. Yeah. Lifeguards have no special authority to arrest the man. Harry's calls police. We've got a, a bag thief down. He's been stealing a lot of bags. He's just been picking up everyone's stuff on the beach. I'll give you a mate. I'll do. Just over there. The man drops the bag and says he will come back with his friend. Amateur detectives Corey and Jethro aren't falling for the trick. Are we letting him go? Because he's out of here, mate. He's, we've, we're, we've ID'd him. He's, one of the lifeguards is chasing him now up, up, up onto Campbell Parade. And then all of a sudden, he's just turned, you know, and he's started bolting. I was like, right. And he's turned on me like as if he was going to go, you know, and I was like, mate, you can run as far as you want, as long as you want. So said, I'll run you down, mate. I'll just keep running behind you. Sure enough, the thief, overweight and unfit, runs out of stamina. And he's like, you're harassing me. He's like, mate, I'm just walking with you. Local undercover police arrive on the scene. Okay, Thank you. Oh, stop. Yeah, sit down. Oh, have a seat. From the police, mate. I'm not hurt, OK? At this point in time, you're under arrest for a stealing. OK, understand that? Yeah. Mate, that guy's face was priceless. He was just like, just sat there and was like, oh, I'm done. <laughs> To secure a conviction, police collect evidence. Sweet, good job. Thanks, for that. Thanks, mate. We'll let you know the result in a couple of weeks. Yeah, epic. Shut up. One hour later, a man approaches the tower, shirtless and unable to locate his belongings. Uh, missing a bag. It's kind of a surf and went to look for it and went missing. Only found me thongs, so... His description matches the bag stolen an hour earlier. We won't let him get away. We have him down here, so... No. You know, whatever we can do to stop him. It's his buddies. Jake got all of his belongings back. The thief got a conviction and a fine. Not much happens on Bondi without lifeguards knowing about it. From the flags to the toddler pool, the entire beach is monitored by lifeguards in the tower. But while lifeguards focus on the surf and the sand, they also face emergencies off the beach as well. We got someone fairly panicked at the back of the uh, lifeguard tower. They said there's a child locked in the car, in the car park. You know, pretty critical situation. Uh, this could go pear-shaped pretty quickly. A two-year-old girl has been accidentally locked in a car by her grandmother. You really sympathise with her. She's probably brought her granddaughter down to the beach to have an ice cream or have a swim or something like that. And... Honest mistake, somehow she's locked the, the car door and then put the keys in and slammed it. So how long? How long? Two minutes. No, no, five minutes. How is she? Is she sweating? Yeah, she's sweating. Yeah, she's sweating. The outside temperature is creeping towards 30 degrees. Inside the car, it will be closer to 50 degrees. You hear stories of young children passing away from heat exhaustion or heat stroke and stuff like that. At these temperatures, a two-year-old can die in less than 10 minutes. She's already been in the car for 15. Two-year-old Emily has been accidentally locked in the car by her grandmother. She's been inside for 15 minutes. The, the girl in the car was visibly distressed. The, the heat was building in the car by the second and she had to get out of that car. You can see the young girl there, and she's crying, she's upset, she's sweating. It's terrifying. Break the window. Break, break the window. You know, decision was made for us, really. We had to smash the window straight away. After 15 long minutes, fresh air finally floods into the car. You know, it's, it's only a simple accident. Grandma would have been really relieved. You OK? I just went here, open car, and uh, I just uh, left here there. I just put my key inside. And when I came around, the car is closed. It was automatically closed again, something maybe on this button. All of these situations 
take our uh, attention away from the water, but we also have a duty of care to the people of Bondi, to our visitors, and especially a poor baby. There's no one more vulnerable than a young child trapped in a car, helpless. As long as that doesn't take ourselves away from our, you know, our core duty, which is making sure people are safe in the water. 1 p.m. on a busy weekday. As the tide runs out, Bondi's rips start to claim their first victims. Hey, Ryan. Ryan, the guy to your left. The guy to your left. With only four lifeguards on duty, maintaining control is key. I was on the beach that day and there were so many rips. There was heaps more rips than lifeguards. About 100 metres away, I just saw four people in trouble and two people in a lot of trouble. With multiple people needing help, one lifeguard won't be enough for the job. Yeah, about as far as you guys will, I think. Yeah, for sure, brother. We've got heaps of hands up. It appears as though one person in the group may be helping the others. As I approach, the mother and daughter are screaming. Dino quickly grabs a woman and her daughter. The man, not a strong swimmer himself, has quite possibly saved two lives. You know, kudos to him, thumbs up. He, he saved those girls' lives. All right, girls. We've got to be on the flag. The girls are dangerous here. Corey gives him a lift back to shore. From what I can see, he did a good job, and, you know, it's pretty cool that he wanted to go and help, you know what I mean? Good work before. Thanks, mate. You went out, saved some people, <laughs> put yourself at risk. Even, <laughs> even got rescued yourself. Yeah, mate, yeah. Good work. They got to do it, mate. You got to do what you got to do. What you got to do, what you got to do. What's your name? My name is Kari. I couldn't argue with, with his line of thinking, you know. He, he saw a damsel in distress and he just went to help her. Where are you from? I'm from India. In India? Born and raised in the south of India. Born in Sherry. Yeah. But then I've been living here for the past 15 years. 15 years? Yeah. You're an Aussie. Oh, my pretty much eye. Yeah. <laughs> you speak like an Aussie, huh? It's not just the lifeguards who are impressed. Kari's sons got to see their dad in action. I think he's a hero because <laughs> he saved a mother and a daughter from the current that could have killed them. So I think he's a hero. Kari represents the good in people. And, uh, yeah, he's a good bloke. Bondi in the afternoon. It's arguably the most beautiful time of day. It's certainly the busiest. The last hour of duty for lifeguards, 6 to 7 p.m., is infamously known as the witching hour. Just as things were settling down, you know, it was home time, and we were, ha we were over it. We'd had enough, and Harrison was downstairs, and I don't know how, but he's just spotted these two people down south. Are there two heads, flip it, are there two heads off that back and that rip in that corner? Yeah, you, you guys better go down. Yeah, I've got to go. You drive, you drive. I've got it, I've got it, you drive. From the centre of the beach, Harrison strains to identify a commotion in the dark waters at South Bondi. Over the swells, I could, I could see someone, it was a few surfers. I don't know, and I keep on second guessing myself. Are there two heads, flip it, are there two heads off that back and that rip in that corner? Do you want to get another board? Just grab another board. I don't know how he did it. We're all tired, but he spotted it like a little genius. You drive, you drive. I've got it, I've got it, you drive. The distance from the tower to the south corner is 500 metres. Yeah, whip it to boys in the rhino. You're going to just go... Definitely one, probably 
Might as well both go to straight and out there. Yeah, copy me, how's it going? The swimmers have drifted 200 metres offshore. Harrison and Ryan dig deep for the paddle. It was a really long paddle out, and I kept looking up and felt like I wasn't even halfway yet. I had to put my head down, just keep paddling, keep paddling. You're flying down there, you know, they're seeing all these different people drowning, and you've got to make a decision who do I need to go to first, and it does get the heart rate up. It just seems like people just pick when we're leaving. Oh, okay, lifeguards are leaving now, and now's a good time to drown. Yeah, it is a little bit frustrating, but um, I mean, we're lifeguards, we're not gonna let someone drown, even if we are off the clock. You're sweet. <laughs> if I put him on the board, you're sweet. I got this patient, I did offer him the lift, and I said, oh, you know, we'll get a wave. You wanna jump on and get a wave? Oh, well, yeah, man. <laughs> He was like, yeah, like, let's get a wave. And he was pumped and I like, so he got, got more than he bargained for, I think. As they move into the impact zone, Harrison and Ryan must avoid getting hit by a looming set. A little bit of experience came into play on the way back in and Harrison nailed it like a seasoned veteran and Ryan got smashed like a rookie. <laughs> <laughs> in front of all the guys, you want to impress them and all that, and definitely one of the things not to do is um, no stop with a patient, that's for sure. With the only available buggy at South Bondi, Whippet spots more people in trouble at the middle of the beach. I looked down and spotted another group of about five people in the other rip. Yeah, two more on this other rip, but... Without backup, lifeguards will be outnumbered. Harrison and Ryan were trying to get them on the radio, and uh, in the end it was just up to me and Jess. Almost all of the rescue equipment is packed away, so lifeguards must improvise. We just had to run downstairs, take some boards off the racks and pin it. Go, boss. So I got back to shore. I heard radio chat going non-stop. All right, get on the back. And I just knew, I said, Ryan, just screen Ryan, get on the buggy, let's just go. We've got to go backpackers. have just finished a rescue at South Bondi when Jesse and Whippet spot more swimmers in trouble in the middle of the beach. Go, box. Almost all of the rescue equipment is packed away, so lifeguards must improvise. They came from one side, me and Jess were coming, so... In the end, there was four lifeguards on boards, which is pretty rare, but it was after closing time. So there was, you know, we're all in the one spot. After doing a massive paddle in the south corner, then having to go full, full speed out for this group, I just gave up. Put my head on the board. I was like, "Oh, no more." Please, no more swimming. Come back tomorrow. This has just been one heck of a finish to an afternoon. We would have had guaranteed multiple deaths right now if we'd gone like when we were supposed to have left. They were gone. So uh, yeah, I think the boys have really earned. Got their keep today, and I think we're all pretty exhausted. So, time for a nice cold beer in the shower, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm proud of the boys. You know, they're back and forth, back and forth, trying to pack all the gear up and in between doing rescues. So, it's a part of the job, and it's something they've uh, learned to do, and they do it very well. So, 
Just when we think we're all done and dusted, the boys have rescued two, we've just rescued another five. We're that close to a beer in the shower. Jesse's on again. I've seen a guy like 300 metres further out. And like, obviously I can back myself, but I just, you know, I know how fit Ryan is. I was like, brother, you're coming with me, mate. Let's go. <laughs> In the fading light, Jesse struggles for a visual. Well, yeah, both paddled out and he was so far out. And actually, it was the same bloke I'd rescued about 15 minutes earlier that wanted to get a wave. The man got dumped by Ryan earlier. Now on board with Jesse, he gets a second chance at catching a wave at Bondi. got to stand up and absolutely stoked about it and yeah obviously he can go home from Mondo with a smile on his face. When someone's standing on the front of your board it's good for the boys to have a laugh at. Ten after hours rescues in less than ten minutes. Lifeguards finally get to call it a day. Next time on Bondi Rescue. The beach under attack. Heaps, heaps of Louis. Probably the most I've ever seen down here. A drug overdose. Mid 20s, female. Hit it out of consciousness. A dislocated shoulder and a missing boy. Lifeguards are hit by a perfect storm. And there's that real feeling of has something really bad going on here. Mouse struggles to hold the fort. The first thing you think is, could something have been missed? Hello, guys. And a visit from the world's most remarkable surfer. That was pretty incredible when you think about someone who's completely blind out in the ocean catching waves. 